the reality of a judgment day, things changing in a major way. Please listen to what the Spirit is going to say in the next few minutes. The last two verses in our Sunday school lesson this morning talks about if a brother err from the way, from the truth. Okay, he was once in truth, once enlightened, once in a position where should he err, there's something that needs to be done. And it follows after that that one who would restore him or convert him, it says, salvation would be experienced or else death. So there's something very serious about that. We kind of possibly go over it and don't think about it very much. But no one understanding that there is a thought or a concept, a reality, frankly, of the wrath of God. Anybody feeling uncomfortable? If you are, that's normal. God bless you for being normal. If you have a tendency to try to kind of push it off or not listen to it, <clears throat> you're not making the right choice. I told you this is going to be brief. It won't be long, but I'm going to take a little bit of time with it. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today for your kindness and mercy. We thank you for the ministry of your spirit to remind, to encourage, to correct and direct our lives today that we find peace and serenity in your presence and confidence to serve and represent you in this hour. I ask that you lead me as I minister your word today, that I speak truth, representing your truth in a manner pleasing to you, that we hear and receive and apply to our lives. Thank you, Father, for the day and hour that we're living in, the privilege to be a light, an ambassador, an inspiration to others that they might know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Thank you for your blessing, for the hope that we have, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Two spots in a passage that was in our lesson this morning says, Be patient for the coming of the Lord. There's an anxiousness in the church realm who are trusting and believing God, designed that the Lord come quickly, even says so in the Scripture. And it also alludes to the concept of the whole creation is looking forward to a change. This verse, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 10 says, Wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, if you'll turn, turn there right quick. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. No one understand that God offers, are you listening? His love. He offers understanding. He offers forgiveness. He also offers acceptance through the gospel of Jesus Christ, who trust and believe Him and serve Him. Have confidence in Him. God offers love, understanding, forgiveness, and acceptance through the gospel in Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting with verse 6. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. That's quite a mouthful right there. That's challenging right there in itself. Because our society is so easily lulling everyone to sleep concerning responsibility, concerning righteousness, concerning eternity, concerning the wrath of God, all those kinds of things, society seems a little sleepy about it, kind of mundane about it. I'm not trying to be critical. I'm absolutely telling you the truth. The Scripture tells us not to be asleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Now there's the situation. That's the choice we have, either to be asleep or not asleep, to be sober or drunken, one or the other. Every one of us is in one category or the other. Every one of us are in one category or the other. The next two verses say, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. God has wrath. He gets very angry about certain things. The biggest thing He gets angry about is sin. 
frankly, idolatry. And there's various forms of idolatry I'm going to touch on this morning just for a little bit. It says, Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also as ye do. For yet a little while, Hebrews says, and he, shall, he that shall come will come and not tarry. There's a time yet to play. There's a to the time and place for his return. It's right at our foot's door. It's right in our very near future. The scripture tells us to stay awake. It says to stay sober. Don't be moved and manipulated and coerced by society's insinuations and threats and false accusations. The other day I was going into town. And with our recent rains, I saw two rainbows. And it reminded me of Genesis chapter 9 and 11, where it said, The earth and all flesh will not be destroyed again by water. It's going to be destroyed, but not by water. And that reminded me of the time. However, wrath and destruction will come to this earth. The wrath of God will be executed upon the ungodly during the seven-year tribulation during the final judgment, and the lake of fire. These are realities. Don't hear a lot about it. I'm talking about the wrath of God this morning. It's a reality that we need to hold dear to our heart in the sense that we should respect what God has provided for us so that we can avoid, so that we don't have to be accounted of those to fulfill the destruction that's going to come. That's the truth. Society is full. The world is full of all kinds of things that is tempting and de desirable. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's get involved with this. Let's get involved with that. And for a little bit, it's exciting. A little bit, it seems cool. But in time, it runs out and it becomes disappointing and very deceptive. Amen. Revelation 21 and 8, it said, here's a list. And I know you've seen it and there's other places. The fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone and fire, which is the second death. That's the reality. It's out there right now waiting. It's the final judgment. That's the fulfillment of God's wrath against the ungodly. It's out there. Guess what happens to us? We're tempted to sin every day. We're tempted to be ungodly every day. We're tempted with all kinds of things that would draw us away from God's purpose and plan. And for all honest, we've all been tempted to the extent that we've failed, we've sinned. And those of us that are in right mind and, and secured in His Spirit has asked Him to forgive us. That keeps us on the straight and narrow, if you will. The wrath of God is real. It's going to be poured out. It's going to be executed. And finally, it's going to be the second death. <clears throat> Titus, and here's, here's a verse that just says it all in one little verse. Titus 1 and 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. How is it that people deny the Lord? By the way they live. The things they do or not do. This is how folks deny the Lord. When they know to do good and they don't do it, they're denying Him. When they do things that they shouldn't do, they're denying Him. Guess what? That's not right. That's not good. It's forgivable if you're interested and you ask and confess. And what? He's faithful to, and just to forgive us of every sin and unrighteousness. But in works they deny Him being abominable. We're going to talk about that just a little bit this morning. Let me back up. They profess they know. But in works they deny him, being den abominable. You know, the, what kind of a sin is it that you have to commit to be abominable? Any one of them. There's specific ones that he talks about, but any one of them. Being abominable and disobedient, same category. Abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate, void, numb, dull, non-existent concerning the right thing to do. People are out there. Guess what? This is going to stir up the wrath of God. In fact, he's very concerned about it right now. Pastor, why are you preaching about this? I'm preaching it because I want you to avoid the wrath of God. That's why. That's why. And there's a way to avoid it. Let me repeat again. God offers his love. 
He offers his understanding, he offers his forgiveness, and he offers his acceptance through the gospel. There's all kinds of avenues out in society that will lead you the wrong way. Genesis chapter 18 and 19 talks about the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. We're familiar about that. There was a concern, and God says, I'm going to go down and check it out. Read it. I'm going to go down and look and see. Abraham tried to come to their defense. Would you save it for 50 people, 45 people, 40 people, 35 people, 30 people? On down the list, he tried and tried and tried. It come down to a few. Lot and a few of his family made it out. Fire and brimstone come down because of the sin they were guilty of. Do I have to say what it is? Very abominable. What does abominable mean? It means this. Detestable. Disgusting. This is the sin, not the person. This is the sin, not the person. God loves the person. In fact, he happens to love us, you know. You remember where you were delivered from? From the bondage of sin. Let me read a little bit more. It says, detestable, disgusting, filth, pollution, abhorring, unclean, odorous, indignation, unlawful, unacceptable, defiant, idolatrous. This is what abominable means. Amen. You remember the verse I read in Revelation? The fearful, unbelieving, and the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, etc. Things that are abominable is very serious and very upfront against God. He's very upset about it, very full of wrath about it. He's disturbed about every other sin that we would commit. But there's some that's right up there at the top, like the first commandment. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Things that are of abominations right up there with idolatry. Sexual perversion is as idolatry. He's very much against it. The Bible talks about it quite a bit. What is this message about? It's about the reality of the wrath of God. I'm preaching to remind you so that we can avoid it. There's a manner to avoid it. Before all of that happens, you know what's before that? With people that's guilty, misery, unsurety, unstable, difficult living through life, etc. I'm not being ugly, though it may sound like it. I'm telling you there's a way away from it. There's a way to find peace and joy and victory because God offers love. He offers understanding. He offers forgiveness. He offers acceptance. It will follow what the gospel has to say. Romans chapter 1, there's a chapter that's per primarily full of very serious things, abominable things. The first part starts out really good, but isn't it interesting that Paul happened to read, or rather write, what's in that particular chapter? And you can read all of it, I'm just going to mention this. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. What did that say? Ro Romans 1, 18. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There's graphic details that follow if you want to read it. You're probably already familiar with it. God's not happy about it. He's not happy about any sin that we allow to go on in our life thinking it's okay and we'll get by. You won't. You might be okay, so you think right now. You might be okay right now, so you think. Sooner or later, a toll will be taken. Anybody know what happens to somebody that's hooked on drugs year after year after year? Their life depletes in various kinds of ways. Same thing with a, 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 a drunkenness, sexual perversion, homosexuality, pornography, all those kinds of things. They eat on the person, and in time, it ruins their life. And if they don't find forgiveness, there's wrath to come, punishment to come, judgment to come. That's in this book. Amen, it is. I'm getting close to being uh, near the end. Isaiah 16 2 says, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. It's coming. It's already started. What's it talking about? It's talking about the ugliness of sin, primarily. There's other literal darkness that will happen, but primarily the ugliness of sin and the influence that it has on society and gross darkness, the people. Sin's going to abound. The love of many will wax cold. It's happening. Be warned today, April 2nd, 2023. Avoid the wrath to come. Do whatever you need to do on a regular basis that your sin is covered by the blood and you've been forgiven by your recent 
errors. Amen. <clears throat> Who would you rather associate with? A whoremonger, a murderer, a rapist, a liar, somebody that's abominable? Who would you rather associate with? Well, if you're not right when the time comes, you'll be around all of them. Is that ugly? Is that unfair? Is that a, a low blow? I don't know what to call it. But think about your life. Be in a position that we can avoid the wrath to come. Colossians 3, 6, Because of sin, the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Call it wrath, call it dis, uh, a judgment, call, call it whatever you want to, but that experience, that judgment, that decision by God will come our way. Let's be in a position, let's stand in a position in His grace, in His love, in His mercy, and avoid the wrath to come. Revelation 21, 27 says, And there shall in no wise enter into it, call it talking about heaven, anything that defiles neither whatsoever works abomination or makes a lie. Nobody's going to be there that's guilty of those things. They may have been in the past and find forgiveness, which that's one of the greatest blessings that we've ever experienced in our life, and that is the forgiveness and mercy of God. Amen, absolutely. It really, really is. I'd like to expand on that, but I want it this time. The end of that verse says, But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, they're the ones going to heaven. They're the ones that has eternal life. There's the one who has the promise. All right, last passage, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. You remember early it says, Don't be asleep. Last night when you were asleep, you know what kind of condition you were in? It's simple, vulnerable. Unless you're a light sleeper, you're not quite so vulnerable. But translate that into what we're talking about today. We're vulnerable if we let things numb us, don't care, not responsible, don't be accountable, all those kind of things. You're asleep. You're not watching out. Pay attention to what's going on. According to the Word of God, be alert. Avoid the distractions that's out there. Be sober, clear-minded uh, of uh, intoxicating influences that draw us into shame. Put on the whole armor that we might be able to stand in the day of judgment. Okay, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. See that ye refuse not him that speaks. Lord ever, has the Lord ever talked to you and you didn't listen to him? Has the Lord ever talked to you and didn't want to talk back? Have a conversation. The scripture tells us right here, See that ye not refuse him that speaks. For if they, talking about those who did refuse, did avoid, did rebel, for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more, why is that? Why is it much more to us? Because there's more validity in God's promise, more reality in his promise right now for us and to us. And guess what? Jesus Christ himself died. He died for us, which we're celebrating this coming week. He did that for us so we can avoid, so we can escape, so they won't have to face judgment and wrath. Uh, much more shall we not escape, or not we escape, if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. When the Lord speaks to our heart, one of the best things you can do, as was demonstrated this morning, people prayed, people listened, People found forgiveness, possibly. Found counsel and direction, possibly. I don't know what all happened, but the Lord was speaking and people were listening. People made decisions. People made things right. That's wise. I'm telling you, that's wise in order to avoid the wrath to come and various things that we might consider to call it or experience it. <clears throat> I told you early on this wasn't popular. You don't hear a whole lot about it, but I'm telling you about it this morning. April the 2nd, 2023 a.m., Noon is, sir. Well, it's after a.m. Going to be finished real soon. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Judgment is coming to heaven and earth. What? I don't know all the answers, but he's going to judge everything. Because there were some who before didn't pay any attention. 
And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things which are shaken as things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. That simply means what's not acceptable or needs to go on was going to be destroyed and stopped. That which is eternal, which is involved in God's plan, will continue. Almost finished. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. This is the direction. This is the counsel. This is the advice. Operate in God's love. Operate in His grace. Operate in His purpose. No one understand the gospel. Live that way. Involve yourself in that way. Avoid things that are detrimental and that's abominable and all those kind of things in that category. That goes for all of us. That goes for all of us. There's specific things that the Scripture talks about that's abominable, that it's in the same category as sin. The murderers, the whoremongers, the seducers, idolaters, all of those, all liars, all those in the same category. So don't be picky about things you might be tempted about and think, oh, that's not so bad. Others are worse off than me. You're fooling yourself. Avoid what will drag and ruin your life. The tempter comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his only business. Don't let him. You have the authority and power to over that. The last verse there says, For God is a consuming fire. I'll repeat this one thing once again. God offers his love, his understanding, his forgiveness, and acceptance. Amen. That's the truth. We can avoid the wrath to come if we'll accept what he has to offer. You remember when God told Abraham concerning his son and go up on the mountain and do a certain thing? The scripture says go and offer him a sacrifice. Just follow what the Lord asks you to do. By the time you get to, to the finish of what he's asked you to do, it may very well change. The scripture says wait upon him. Let's do the waiting. Let's be doing the patient part. Let's believe God and trust him. That's how we avoid certain pitfalls in life. But, 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 I want this. I understand. But, 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 they, 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 I understand. But the Lord says this. Follow him. Trust him. Believe him. May the Lord richly bless you. Know that it's not appointed unto man who wants to die. I mean, that is the truth. We have the opportunity to avoid the wrath to come. It is appointed unto man who wants to die after this, the judgment. Amen. Anyone need prayer this morning? You have a particular need. I know there was prayer earlier. I'd like for the church to pray with you about. 